Welcome to this week's episode of AI News You Can Use. Special edition because we're on our team retreat in Portugal. But that doesn't change anything about the fact that we have a ton of new AI releases to cover this week. And it's a very practical one, if I may say so myself. We have a brand new app that checks if your website is ready for the AI era. GPT's most important feature is now available to all free users. And so much more in this week's episode of AI News You Can Use, the show that takes all the AI releases of this week, filters for the most important ones, and then I get to present them back to you. Oh, and if you're worried the entire video is gonna be presented from within this door, don't be. Let's do this. So I'm actually really excited for the main story this week because this is something we've seen people request over and over, both in our community and all across the internet. It's figuring out if your website is AI ready. In other words, if LLMs are going to index your website and serve it up as an answer to people's prompts. There have been some approaches now, but I think this release is the best thing I've seen so far for this because it's an open source app from Firecrawl, which you might already know as one of the most popular services to search the web, to check if your website is AI ready. Now in this tweet, you can see the CEO of Firecrawl shared this on Twitter a few days ago. It's actually not getting a lot of attention, which surprised me personally. And this app is fully open source and available on GitHub. Now, the problem here is that you would need to download this, install it on your own machine, insert the API key, and then run the app locally to do this, which is a high barrier of entry. And as we are on our weekly retreat here, and we have the entire team, when we saw this app, it immediately occurred to us that hosting this on the web for the viewers of the show would be a great idea. So Dirk, who's one of the most active community members who's here with us, did exactly that for you. Want to briefly join me, Dirk? Okay, Dirk. So just briefly tell us, what did you do here with this open source application? Well, I enhanced it in a way so that you can use it much more easily and it's much more into your workflows. You can not only see what the app tells you what to improve, but it also gives you a download for a markdown file that gives you a complete actionable plan on what to implement, how to implement it. And you can also give this to your AI to let it do that for you. Yes, exactly. And I think this is really smart. So if you open up this website that we hosted on Vercel, you can see that it first asks for API keys, which I'm just going to put in here. So you get these by creating an OpenAI and Firecrawl account. And then it immediately works. And I could just go ahead and I could just type in the URL of the company website, analyze site. And as Turk mentioned, the basic app would give you just this. It shows you, hey, okay, you're 70% of the way there and it gives the details on the different points, what you did well and what's missing. So in this case, we should add an LLM text file, a robots text file and a sitemap. But what Dirk did here is he added this download report button, right? So you could just press this and you get a markdown file with all the instructions for any AI assistant to actually do the stuff that this app suggests. So as you can see, it's the whole report. And then in the end, I believe there's the instructions here, yeah? So if you give this to something like Cloud Code or Cursor and it has access to your website, it can just do it and you don't even have to hire a dev to get it done for you. Matter of fact, after this recording is done, I'll just run that and I'll show you a screenshot of the score of our website. <laughs> And also one more thing, big disclaimer, we kind of just hacked this up in a day, so no guarantees whatsoever. We just took the one-to-one -one open source repo and hosted it for you, but we're not charging for this or guaranteeing that this works flawlessly. Yet, I think this is something that everybody should look into doing because I can tell you, if you look for certain search terms in ChatGPT, some of my YouTube videos actually rank there because YouTube did a really good job with optimizing the videos for LLMs and you should do the same with your website. Okay. Good luck with the next story. One quick follow-up to last week's video is we talked about the new version of the Google Translate app. And as many of you correctly pointed out, I actually made a mistake during my demo. And I want to remedy that in this video. So it's very subtle, but when you go to this conversational feature, it's this AI button here in the middle that allows you to engage the new AI mode. To me, it seems that the other mode also uses AI, but this explicitly reads things out loud and live translates with AI. So everything covered in last week's video stands. It's just this little sparkle button that you want to hit to try the new feature. Very powerful, been trying it and it's quite good at live translation. Make sure to update your app and check it out. All right, so next up, I wanna show you one of the best ways to turn your ideas into real apps, both mobile and desktop. That's the key here, using AI. And that is with Anything, the sponsor of today's video. Anything lets you create powerful mobile apps and websites. And all you need is one skill, communication. No coding required at all. If you can imagine it and put your ideas into words, Anything can transform those words into a real app. And if you've ever used 
use ChatGPT at all, the platform will feel very familiar. As you can see, there's not a wall of code overwhelming you, just a simple chat interface. And the part that I really want to highlight here is how good they're at creating mobile apps. So if you're following this channel, you might be familiar with many of the workflows we covered, but usually the focus is web apps and mobile apps are an afterthought. That's not the case here. You can build native mobile apps and web apps with the same backend. You can see instant previews of them on your phone and they have a one-click submit to the application store. Everything is included here. Front-end, back-end, database, AI integrations, and you can build it all with natural language, just like you would be messaging a developer. So if you have an idea for a mobile app, anything lets you go from idea to live app in hours using just prompts. No coding or extra tools required at all. So if that sounds good to you, go check out anything today. Use the code AI Advantage to get $10 off your first month. And now let's get back to the next piece of AI news that you can use. Okay, so for the next story, I want you to pay attention, especially if you're not a paid user in ChatGPT. I personally think projects are the most powerful feature they have ever shipped. It's the best interface to manage context, which as you might know, is the key to getting good results from ChatGPT. Up until now, only the paid accounts had them. Now in your free account, you yourself can use projects and we already have a video in the pipeline teaching you how to set them up for yourself, how to compare to memories, custom instructions, instructions GPTs. Subscribe if you want that. It's going to be coming out soon. We just have to rework it a little bit because in my recording of that video, this was a premium paid feature and a very powerful one. And now all the free users have it. So if you're on a free account, go check out projects, set up one for personal chats, one for work chats. And if you want more guidance, have a look at the video that's coming soon. All right. Next up, we have GenSpark Clip Genius, a new feature by the Agentic app that kind of tries to do it all. At least that's what I would conclude from the recent releases. And this time they're trying to do video editing. We test this with a few examples and compared it to some of our manual editing efforts recently. Concretely, what we did is give it a lecture from our community on ChatGPT connectors that I held. And we manual edited a short slash reel from this, which turned out great. To compare, we also gave GenSpark the same source video and gave it the following prompt. Understand the video, select one topic or quote, and create a vertical video that is less than 60 seconds. And the result, I won't even show the whole thing here because honestly, it's not worth your time. First of all, it's not vertical at all. It can re-edit 16 to 9 to 16 to 9, which would be fine by itself, but it just picked a segment of the video that is, first of all, not even a really good segment. I suppose if you're just looking at the transcript, it's okay-ish, which is what this tool does. And secondly, it didn't even edit much. It kind of just took out one part, if I saw this correctly. Directly. And in some other testing we did, it didn't even take out one part. It kind of just clips something and gives it to you and says, hey, this is the edit that I came up with. So while this might be an interesting category, right now you can think of it as an automatic way to transcribe something and then pick a few parts of the transcript that might work as a video. But reviewing that is probably more work than just clipping those things yourself right now. We are not going to lose our job. <laughs> so my editing team, which is actually here helping with the recording right now, guys, this is terrible, no need to be afraid. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, next up we have some updates to Notebook LM. I always like featuring these because this is one of the most powerful apps in the entire AI space. If you missed it, we uploaded a four minute tutorial that covers the entire app, how to use it, what to use it for. So make sure to check that out if you're new to it. If you're already familiar, then you will wanna see this new feature, which are new formats for the audio overviews, aka podcasts, as many people call them. Instead of just creating the typical deep dive that you get with these podcasts, you can also switch it to brief, to a critique, or to a debate bait format. One interesting thing to note here is that all of these come with separate voices too. This is the brief on welcome to the critique. Welcome to the debate. So if I just open one of my recent notebooks, go to audio overviews, you can see these new presets right here. If I flip the preset to brief and I say, tell me about hooks, then this audio overview should reflect that and not be a 5, 10, 15 minute file as it so often is with the default preset. So here's the little audio overview slash podcast that we got from the concise preset. This is the brief on mastering Claude code, advanced workflows and responsible vibe coding. Okay, so it sounds good. Obviously, we'll have the same problems the original audio overviews had, which is sometimes it just misses the mark on the question you give it. But it's definitely more concise. This is a two minute video and from multiple long sources like this, without the preset, you could expect something multiple times as long. Okay, for the next one, we have a category that I particularly like because it's video production related. It's 11 laps sound effects now in version two. So the announcement here is relatively minor. The duration of the clips you can generate went from 22 seconds to 30 seconds. The bitrate 
is higher, and you can create sound effects that loop seamlessly, which can be nice. Now, they presented it as a brand new release, so we went ahead and tested it and compared it to some of the sound effects that we generated with version 1. And the overall result, eh, it's similar or not identical quality level to the first version, and classic professionally recorded sound effects still sound better. But nevertheless, let me give it a super quick test. So let's just follow what they recommend, go to animals, and how about a seal in distress? I believe the children are our future. Okay, we got four. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's like a person impersonating a seal in distress, not an actual seal, no? <laughs> So I would say for the purpose of this video, this worked exceptionally well. If I needed that sound effect, no, just no. And that's even the category they recommended. So let's just move on. Okay, one more time, maybe. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Thank you, Eleven Labs. Okay, next up, let's do this week's quick hits, the stories that are worth talking about, but maybe we don't need to spend multiple minutes on them. Starting out with updates to Mistral's Le chat. They're really expanding their platform with some of the state-of-the-art features like MCP connectors, they added memories to the entire application, and I would argue that these two are actually the most important features you can have in a platform like this, and they even allow you to do custom MCPs now. Then also we have ChatGPT adding parental controls into ChatGPT, so this isn't rolling out yet, but some new lawsuits in the US where parents blame OpenAI for manipulating their children into certain behaviors are happening right now, and this seems like a direct reaction to that. And I guess it makes sense. I'm personally more interested in this trend here that they're going to be adding more guardrails and manual controls on how all of this can be used, starting with parental controls. So we'll keep you posted once that is actually implemented. Next up, we have a new model coming out of Grok focused on coding, uh, fast coding that is. It's literally called Grok Code Fast 1. And I think this graph says it all. It's very cheap with high tokens per second, but obviously you're not getting state-of-the-art quality here. Interesting for some niche developer use cases. And then we have some new models from Microsoft called MAI, as in Microsoft AI, I believe, Preview and MAI One Voice. Honestly, these are nothing special and they're just slowly releasing them to certain people. They even include wording in their blog post that, hey, don't judge this too harshly, we're developing these. But I do want to note that these are integrated in Copilot, which for many enterprises is the only choice. And as we kind of reviewed Copilot for this story, we noticed a lot of interesting updates, including one that I wanted to highlight, which is a daily news roundup automatically generated for you within Copilot. This is something we don't see in other LLM platforms, and I like to highlight features like that because eventually you'll see them trickle down into ChatGPT if they catch on. And I personally found that even more interesting than the new models here. But yeah, now you know about both. In the AI video world, Hicksfield also released two new features, none of them revolutionary, but both interesting. One of them is Draw to Edit, a interactive canvas where you can use the new Nano Banana model, and you can edit and animate all in one visual interface. It also allows you to really easily use multiple models. So if you do that, check this out as an option. And secondly, they released Speak 2.0, which is something similar to HeyGen, both in the functionality and the quality. I think HeyGen calls this Avatar IV, where you just upload an image and it turns it into a video. You can do the same with Higgsfield now, and you just select one of their voices, give it a script or generate one, and then you get an okay-ish AI video. And that's really everything for this week. I hope you found something that was useful or inspirative to you. Recently, we uploaded a lot of high-quality educational videos. So if you want an 80-minute course on Cloud Code or a four minute intro to Notebook LM, you could check them out right here. And if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to subscribe. And with that being said, my name is Igor, and I will see you next week.